Hi friends, welcome to lecture 49 on our helicopter dynamics series and today I'm going to take a video to discuss about the free wake and the rotor wake in general. So when you talk about the rotor wake, we are discussing very simple models such as uniform inflow. But in reality, if you deal with comprehensive rotor codes, people use very sophisticated modeling. And so while it's all beyond the purview of this course, I will just introduce you to some of these concepts. This is lecture 49. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we have seen that the momentum theory and the BET are good at obtaining performance and steady state rotor blade response. And in fact, they are also very good for teaching the concepts of helicopter dynamics to people because these theories are simple and you can get close form solutions for them. However, if you turn away from performance and start looking at vibration and loads, and these are very important concepts because you require vibration to be predicted. Vibration remains a very important problem for helicopters. Noise is also a very important problem. And rotor load predictions are also required in order to correctly calculate the dynamic stresses which are taking place on the rotor blade. So in those situations, you would really need a good measure of the actual inflow which is taking place on the rotor. So while momentum theory may be good at giving some sense of a mean value of inflow, because it's kind of uh, summarizing all the effect of the inflow distribution into one number, and therefore it's treating the mass of rotor blades as one large body, which is the actuated disc. But in reality, lambda is a function of r and psi, and therefore we would like to know this functional distribution. So you can think of this as a problem of functional finding where you do not really know the, fa the functional representation, but you would like to get lambda values at all the values of r and psi, remembering that r is varying from 0 to the radius of the blade, and psi is varying from 0 to 360 degrees, or 0 to 2 pi, as the case may be. So the reality of the rotor wake is such that it is a function of the radial location and the azimuthal location and this function is generally a complex function which we do not know as of yet. So one of the ways to find out any scientific fact if you do not know the theory is to do experiments and people have performed experiments using smoke and they have tried to look at the wake in wind tunnels and so on. Now if you do that you can see the basic wake coming around as follows and one of the fact is that there is typically a strong tip vortex which is present and then there are vortex sheets which are within this particular tip vortex and the blade loads look something like this so the blade loads are generated by the wake or you can say the blade the wake is generated by the blade loads now the tip vortex is an important feature of the rotor wake in practice because you have this strong tip vortex which is coming out of the blade tip. And this tip vortex descends below the rotor in a helical path like I showed in the previous slide. Now using any of these smoke injection techniques you can actually visualize the tip vortex in a wind tunnel and you may find actually videos on this problem which are out there in the public domain and you can see how it looks like and you will certainly see it does not look like a uniform inflow model. Though, so the strength of the tip vortex can be reduced by design changes such as twisting the tip nose down, reducing the blade tip area or special shaping of the platform and very often when you look at newer helicopter rotor blades, you will see that there is a lot of time, energy, and money spent on designing the blade tips. And one of the reasons is to mitigate the strength of the tip vortex by 
this kind of plate tip design. Now, powerful tip vortices which are coming out of the blade will impact the blade behind it. So, one tip vortex is being generated by a blade and it hits the blade behind and that leads to what is known as BVI. Okay, and this causes vibration and especially noise. So, the BVI noise is something which is not liked by many and therefore there is an effort to reduce it so again to predict these facts you would require a good wake model now one of the models which has been around for some time is known as a prescribed wake model in this uh, you essentially prescribe this particular variation so you do a series of experiments using the smoke injection theory and then you develop this model lambda is lambda r psi and then you use this model in your computation or in your comprehensive code so this formula which is obtained for prescribing the wake gives you the radial and the other coordinates of the tip vortex in terms of psi and the formulas are also obtained for the vortex sheet which is within this particular tip vortex and essentially the aim of this is to give lambda is lambda r psi as a prescribed model so essentially this is given to you based on experiments now there is one more approach which is frequently used in modern codes and that is the freeway calculation and here numerical methods are used to perform these calculation between the induced velocity distribution and the wake geometry and you continue to do it until this free wake converges now free wake model typically requires substantial computing requirement and it's very much necessary if you are trying to predict blade vibration or rotor vibration and loads it's not so much necessary if you are planning to do a preliminary performance prediction though there also some impact may be there at lower flight speed so free wake is especially important at low speed flight rather than at very high speed flight now just to mention that free wake is actually a field of research we are not going to go deep into this but there is a lot of literature on this you can search in google scholar for example free wake models and you will find for example the johnson's model and bagai lishman model and so on now at a given radial position the alpha value and therefore the circulation varies substantially around the azimuth as the blade goes around and so a numerical simulation of the flow field is needed and that's something you need to do and especially CFD can play a good role in some of these problems also. But typically the flow fields are very involved, the simulations are very complex and again this is an area of research so you can check out Google Scholar for some of the latest research in this field. And one of the facts is that a lot of the wake simulations, essentially the aim of these simulations is to get you lambda as a function of r and psi. Momentum theory gives us a reasonable estimate in forward flight, but of course momentum theory gives us lambda is constant. Now if you use some more complicated free wake model or prescribed wake model, you get some functional variation that is lambda is function of r and psi. And the correctness of this model depends on the different model concerned. For example, when I run the code with different free wake models, I get different results. So that is somewhat disconcerting, but that's the reality of the rotor dynamics prediction problem now you may get the inflow from the free wake model or from the momentum theory model or some other model but finally you have to turn to you have to turn to bet to get the different loads because bet essentially lets you calculate the sectional loads so that is very important to Remember that the sectional loads are often decoupled from the lambda calculation. 
and so the lambda calculation may take place from a different method such as based on momentum theory or prescribed wake or free wake theory and the aerodynamic load calculations at the blade section would be based on BET and the CL CD values at the particular section you are in so we will end this lecture here i will see you in my next video